What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Surf, and welcome to Surf and Shank, our weekly series where we talk about whatever. We talk about shit. We talk about shit. Whatever on our mind. Whatever lead the day. We go out... <laughs> Seriously. That was a really long lead, and we... We... We, uh, we went for beer at... Beer. We went for beers and tacos, um, as we do every Thursday, and this gets posted on Friday. And what we do is we craft our subject content over that conversation of beers and tacos. And so we talked a little bit about, what did we talk about today? We talked about being broke, right? Jeez, we talked about a lot of shit, but being broke, I think, was the subject we decided that we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on being broke, so strap on, pick you up yourself by your bootstraps. <laughs> what the f*** was that? I should badep, badep, badep. <laughs> Strap yourself in and get ready. All right, so... I think so. <laughs> I don't know. So... Okay, I want to start as I usually do with something a little bit philosophical. I, I've I've been broke off and on my on and off in my life for a long time, and I've made money on and off in my life uh, for a long time. But I've prevalently been broke, and I'm okay with both. But one quote that really got me through a lot of shit was one I don't know who it's from, but it says, "Being broke is a temporary situation. Being poor is a state of mind." And I totally agree with that. Like, being broke is one of those things where it's like it's happenstance, right? Like, my wife and I do what we love to do, and the trade-off for that is not making a lot of money. And that's okay. Maybe someday we, we will. But, like, the focus is not on the almighty dollar. And it sucks in some ways, but in other ways, it's sort of fulfilling doing what you love to do. So, it's been a roller coaster. How has it, uh, has it been for you, Sean? Well, it's been the same thing. It's been a roller coaster. It's, uh, when I was married, you know, we struggled. We lived week for week and there's you know i'm sorry not week for a week because you don't live week for week you live week to week and it was you live day for day <laughs> well seriously it's, it, it was shitty as uh you know back when i was married we would i'd get paid on a thursday and we'd be writing checks on the tuesday to cover that check on the thursday knowing that we had that two days to cover it so we'd be spending our money two days before we got it and it was awful man you know we had a a newborn and we'd be honestly Wait. weak. Yeah, well, yeah, wham, wham, wham. It's like, Dad, I have a diaper change. It's like, shh, shh, keep your diaper for another two weeks. We ain't got the money to buy new ones. And it was, I mean, it was awful. We were living beyond our means. We were, uh, I mean, we lived nicely. I'm not going to lie, but we shouldn't have been living where we were. We were living in a, a townhouse that was way beyond what I alone was making. She wasn't working. She was, uh, you know. Crackling. Yeah, she was a crack whore. And uh, crack whores are cool and give great head, but the fact is they don't bring a whole lot of money. They don't generate a lot of net, net worth. No. Um, but, yeah, you know, when, when Sean and I met, actually, we were at a kind of a weird crossroads because Sean was in his career doing well financially and I was doing abysmally. And so it was cool. It was something we were sort of able to relate on, even though there was like a thousand years between us and like, you know, I don't know, you grew up in the 60s with afros or whatever. <laughs> I still have an afro. Yeah. I just assume you grew up in the 60s, even though it's not true at all. No, it's, it's, it's really not. I mean, I, basically, I grew up in the late 80s, uh, early 90s. And, uh, I mean, I did have an afro and I had a tail. And, and I, I grew up in the hair. 90s. So, like, we were like 10, 15 years. Yeah, I mean, with, between, us, there's, you know, between us, there's only like 40, 50 years apart. But, I, think I mean, we still have a good relationship. Like what, 14 years, 15 years? Yeah, legitimately, we're, we're a good 14 years apart, but I mean, we still have a good relationship. And we a lot of things we relate to, I mean, the fact is that we both have been on the shit end of money. We both have shitty relationships with our our families that we don't even talk to. So I think that's why we get along so well, is that we have and a lot hand to relate jobs. to. the hand jobs. Well, I mean, that we both right now are giving each other a hand job. It's Those great. are crucial. Oh, man, it is fucking awesome. Oh, my God, you have to put your mouth on it, but that's even better. But, like, the, the whole issue of money is, like, you know, culture and society rewards people who intrinsically have value in that, i.e., they have status for some sort of some sort of reason, whether it's that they're popular or cool or have a skill set that you prefer or they're viewed publicly as a certain thing. And careers have a lot to do that. Like, you know, for instance, um, Sean does well for himself, right? He does good in his career, but it's not nearly as well looked upon as if he were a doctor or a lawyer or, a, you know, insert popular position here. And next month, next year, things will change and there will be some of the few that stay the same, like, you know, the doctors and lawyers are always kind of the mainstays, right? But, you know, and it's totally cliche, but finding that thing that, that really lights you up every day, that you're, you become passionate about, that's when, like, the dollar signs really, once your basic needs are met, it's not a whole lot different than if you're making millions of dollars. I watched a documentary called Happy, and in fact, our recital this year was called Happy. And one of the psychologists mentioned, 
in studies and research shows that the difference between someone making $5,000 a year and $50,000 a year is enormous, right? When money lifts you out of poverty and not knowing where your next meal is coming from, it does tremendous things for your mental well-being. The difference between someone making $50,000 a year and $50 million a year, not tremendous in terms of happiness, satisfaction. In fact, people who have a lot of material wealth often report higher numbers of depression and disconnection. And it's because uh, a principle in psychology, here I am getting off on a fucking tangent, a principle in psychology called the hedonic treadmill. The hedonic treadmill states that whatever it is that we purchase or buy or get or acquire, we eventually adapt to it and then we're no longer impressed by it. We want more. And so, you know, for me in my life, it's been really learning how to strike a balance between being poor in my state of mind and being wealthy in terms of like the richness of my life. You know, me being able to wake up and determine what my schedule is going to be is to me infinitely more <laughs> fulfilling than when I used to go to work for guys like Sean, who you fucking come in and tell what you do every day. And I, to be honest, working for you was really, really easy because we both knew what we needed to do. But in most instances, I fucking hated working for other people, and so I'd rather be poor. Right, and you know, I mean, I, I work for other people, and I, I don't dislike what I do. I love everybody I work with, and if you took a survey of everybody that worked for me, I guarantee you I would rank higher than 99.9% .9 of the people out there because of the fact that I am fair, I'm fun to work for, I'm not a... I mean... I'm Sean sure. strips Saturdays. That's what he does at weekly meetings. He pops out of a little cupcake. He strips for the exactly. old Exactly. I mean, it got tired of popping up a cu popping out of a cupcake because I'd eat the motherfucker. <laughs> but it, it was a good time. The employees loved it. And regardless if you're 18 <laughs> or 88 is... I mean, I, I the people that work for me range in age. And I have respect throughout. And it, to me, it's phenomenal. Over the years I've worked in retail, to gain the respect I've gained... From the people I work with, it's fantastic. I mean, do you think that has something to do with the fact that, like, you 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 struggled with hardship in your life to, in terms of like financially that you can relate to your employees more? Or do you well, think it's just an effectiveness? No, I think I think I think it is. It's it, it's you know. I mean, I I wasn't jammed with a silver spoon in my mouth. I mean, nobody gave me shit. Everything I got, I got from me. And you know, yeah, okay, maybe my English isn't the greatest. I don't speak the greatest grammar. And I'm not the most intelligent person in the world, but f that, I don't give a shit. I make myself good money. I live well. Everything I want in my goddamn life, I got. And guess what? I got it because of me. Nobody gave me shit. Nobody handed me shit on a silver player and said, hey, Sean, here, here's a Corvette. Guess what? When I want a Corvette, I went out and got it. I got it because I busted my goddamn ass for 38 years to get what the f I wanted. Anything I want, I got. Nobody. And I repeat, nobody ever handed me shit. I busted my ass for everything I got in my life, and I'm proud of that. And I've I've tried to pass that on to my kids. And I told my my son, you know, my son's 13 years old, and he's like, you know what? He's not doing so great in school. And I I, I basically handed the fucking thing to him, and I says, do you want to fucking drive a Kia or do you want to drive a fucking Corvette? He's like, I want to drive a Corvette, Dad. I'm like, then get your fucking head out of your goddamn ass and start doing good in school. Let the colleges come to you and say, hey, we want you. We want you to come to our college. See, and that's the... the uh, I don't mean to cut you no, off. Go ahead, go, no, go it's ahead. fine. It's because I would have went on for probably another three and a half hours. But that, that, that's the difference, though, between a prosperous mentality and the poor mentality. You know, that's why I love that quote, is, is being poor truly is a state of mind. You know, guys like Sean, you know, ultimately, dude, you know what your rant just fucking reminded me of? is like, that's why we get along, is that like... You and I come from that same situation and that, like, nothing was fucking spoon-fed to us. You know, it's just it's just the way our lives went. It's, the, it's the, the hand that we were dealt. And, you know, you see the people that are victims of the world that, you know, forever are like, oh, my God, you know, the situation I was handed is unbearable. And then there's the people who are like, and again, not to toot some kind of horn, but guys like you and I that are like, you know what? You can sit and fucking wallow and make your life miserable because you don't have money or you don't have the status or you don't have the job or you don't have the education. You can look at a thousand reasons why things aren't going to work for you. Or you can take the position of, hey, like this is what has to happen next. I'm going to fucking make it work. You know, I mean, I've made bad decisions in my life. I think we talked about this on last commentary is that no decision is a bad decision as long as it's a learning decision. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. You know, like that time the condom broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you didn't get pregnant, but you're not a woman, so it was no big deal. Sorry, I couldn't resist. It's okay. God, I didn't wear a condom that day anyway, so it doesn't matter. Your, your life is one giant condom not wearing experience. 
Uh, but anyway, it's my song. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, let us know in the comments what you want to hear next. If we don't hear anything, we'll just do what we keep doing, which is getting mildly drunk and then rambling. Uh, so uh, we'll catch you guys next week in the next episode of Surf and Shank. Peace. In the Middle East. And chicken grease. Chicken grease. I like chicken grease. <laughs> I love to lick some chicken grease.